Uh, now we have got another very, very nice host that is part of the Arunia community here in Dubai. We are going to speak with Judy Proceso, that is lecturer at uh, the Computer Engineering and Informatics of Middlesex University and is also the manager of the Robotics Center. He is a very active guy, he is a very good friend of the Assembly and is a person that has done a lot for Arduino in this country. So please, Judy, tell us what's your attitude towards Arduino and uh, yes. coming. Thank you, uh, Simon, for having me uh, in this uh, exciting moment. Uh, Arduino has been around for 15 years. Uh, at that time, it was still very expensive. I still remember that. And I'm glad now it's, it's way, way more affordable. And it becomes really an important part of our life. Okay, so you introduce Arduino in your teaching and how this has brought something new and fresh and affordable and something that is understandable and useful for your students. All right, so Arduino um, plays a very important role, especially in the computer engineering, because uh, it represents the basic of a computer. The student can go down to bits and bytes of the computer without a uh, hidden layer of uh, or hidden behind the layer of operating systems, drivers, all of this. They have access directly uh, to the hardware to make uh, something uh, uh, turn on or turn off or control things directly. And it is also uh, exciting because uh, Arduino is rich of uh, resources uh, in terms of uh, the codes, uh, the knowledge so the student can look for um, different types of codes or, or ideas that has been built millions of them on the internet uh, they can do self-learning um, for example for some uh, modules we we do loan the arduino kits to the students to bring home and they can continue experiment themselves it is really a, a spark of creativity and fun so you want the, the students to get uh, this kind of attitude that it can be a hobby, can be something entertaining, but can be also their future work environment. So if they learn the Arduino way, that also has this kind of very wide sharing attitude and this very wide variety of different projects, they can find their road into their life. And by the way, you mentioned the fact that you know, there is a lot of stuff there but still there is space for innovation and there is also space for, for instance, very quick response to very complicated situations like the one we are living now. So I have heard that you have done, you have put together for this occasion very quickly, something that could be very useful for a lot of people. Please show us. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, so in this situation of a coronavirus attack, I think the first symptom that, that uh, we often encounter is a high, body temperature uh, fever. So I quickly put up uh, things uh, on, uh, on uh, this one is the original Arduino board. Uh, and I have an I2C display over here. I built this in about 15 minutes. I copy paste uh, from some of the codes. I modify some of them. I will uh, send you uh, the codes. And this is the sensor. Uh, it's a laser-based uh, temperature sensor uh, that can measure the temperature of a surface without have to touch it. So uh, it's the same sensor that is used in a commercial thermometer that is used by uh, people out there. Like when you enter a shopping mall, uh, they have these uh, kind of sensors, right? So you can see this, that's my body temperature. And uh, so I have, I have ice over here, the ice drops down. So in the event like this, if you, if you can't uh, buy a, a no-touch thermometer, then you can build it very easily, very quickly. Yeah, well, this is basically the difference between technology that is closed and something that is shared by the community. So if someone has written probably the library that has allowed you to put this thing together in half an hour. So you didn't have to work on the sensor itself, finding out how it talks, the kind of setting the ranges because you found the library, you put that together. You had also another nice library to drive that nice OLED screen. 
And so it was basically putting things together with your idea, but with parts available in the software and in the hardware domains. So this is a very interesting attitude if someone has never seen something like that, because basically it makes technology available to everyone. If you are able to read and if you are able to connect things, you are able to use the Arduino project. This is what comes out of what you've shown us. Yes. Um, and it is also important to draw the line here. Uh, while I'm using other people's uh, code, pieces of code, and I put them together, I have to uh, be willing to share these codes to the public. I would not claim this code as my own code. I come up with this myself. And, uh, or furthermore, I charge people for this. No, I shouldn't do that. Of course, if somebody uh, asks me to build this, I, I could charge for the service charge, but I should not charge on, on, the, on the code itself because it's a community, it belongs to the public, it's open source. So the okay. same thing, uh, we iterate this to the students that uh, to some extent they're, they're allowed to, to take inspiration, take inspiration, not to copy verbatim from uh, the codes that they find on the internet, and the most important thing is that they understand each line of the code that they are using. What does that mean? What is the effect? And of course, they have to modify to see the effect. And after that, they have to share. They have to share the code. OK. Thank you very much for your, uh, your words. And thank you very much for being part of the Dubai community. I hope you see you again. We'll, we'll meet again at the assembly for the next workshop. Thank you Looking very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.